Well, we have reached the end of the line. That's right. We have come to the end of our ownership experience with our 2020 Volkswagen GLI. Yes, that's right. We have sold it. We have actually, actually, we traded it in and uh, it is no more. So all of today's footage is just a voiceover. I'm just doing voiceover over some old footage in full disclosure. But yes, it is gone. It's gone way earlier than we had planned. Uh, we got to 22 months of ownership, 20 months of ownership, almost close to 30,000 miles. And because we did end our relationship sooner than planned, today's video is just going to go into the top reasons why we chose to do that. And also going to provide a little bit of update on that one reliability video that's out there. We've done a, a few videos on this GLI, so go be sure to go check all those out. We did a top five favorite things. We did a performance review, and then we also did an ownership experience. And in that ownership experience, at the end of that, you will hear a little bit about the infamous fuel line rattle that we experienced. So a little bit of update on that was that, uh, you know, we got we got tired of fussing with Volkswagen and the dealer. Some dealers are a little bit more accommodating. Ours was drawing a hard line in the sand. Ultimately, it was not worth our time on the phone and driving down there, et cetera, et cetera. It just was easy enough just to fix ourselves. So sometimes your time is valuable. That's not the way to do it. And you know, sometimes you just can't get the win and your time is more valuable. The other quick update on overall reliability or maintenance was that, uh, yeah, right as we got closer to 30,000 miles, all four wheels were shot, all four tires, those hand coops were shot. Uh, these things apparently don't always come with the best factory alignment. And those 60,000 mile hand kooks were done way before 30,000. So we were looking at four new tires plus a four wheel alignment. Again, if you haven't seen those videos, go back and check those out. But everything stands. Everything stands in those videos. We do not change our opinion. This is a great, great car. So as I dive into these top five or so reasons, they're all kind of interrelated, but not one of them. There's only kind of a couple, I would say, complaints sprinkled in there. We'll get to the main reason on why we decided to go ahead and part ways with our GLI. So let's just start with reason number five. And reason number five is basically we weren't using our GLI as we thought we were when we purchased. We bought this car in 2020. We got an incredible deal because we were sort of in the middle of the pandemic when manufacturers and dealers actually had inventory and they couldn't sell it. So uh, we got a great deal. A GTI was always a bucket list car, but we went out, we looked at the GLI, we loved the back seat room, we loved the price compared to a comparably equipped uh, GTI. And uh, yeah, we decided it would be great channel content. We were thinking about auto crossing it. We weren't gonna track it. Uh, doing some basic mods, definitely a tune. And uh, over time, as we got into 2021 and things started, the needle started moving back towards normal, we started using the car more as a daily driver, going back and forth to work, trips. And uh, that's not why we bought the car. If we wanted just a daily driver and a comfortable trip car, we would not have purchased the GLI, even though it does those things very, very well. So again, when you're not using a car as intended, little annoyances with it kind of start playing on your mind this car wants to be driven wants to be driven hard and when you're not doing that you know there's some other things about it that are just a little quirky so let's get into reason number four again all of these are related reason number four is just the car never truly endeared itself to us and again again i think that's because we weren't using it as we intended again you'll hear me say in a lot of videos that cars are can be more or less than the sum of their parts or, the, or their spec sheet and i think for this gli at least for me personally again how i'm using it basically as a daily driver it did not come together it definitely did not exceed the sum of its parts all the numbers are great on this car the specs are great and but when it comes together it just never endeared itself to me and you know you you know you love your car when you overlook 
annoyances. You, you, you know, you just let them slide because you know that comes with the territory or there's so many other things you love about it that you're willing to overlook some of its, its little nuances. So again, the car just never endeared itself to us. I think a GTI, I think if we had done the GTI, I think that would have been a different, different ending because the GTI endears itself to everybody and that car does come together and does add up to more than some of its parts at least at least at least for me anyway and like i said every car is different every owner is different so again everything i'm saying here is really really specific to me so reason number three is again when you're not using the car uh like it's intended when you're just not falling in love with it and here on beyond the test drive we are strongly believer i strongly believe you need to love your car that's what this is all about you need to love your car however reason number three is when when you're not using it as intended and you don't truly madly in love with it i was not willing to put up with some of the maintenance and reliability issues related to it and because it, it comes with the territory you know any performance car you're gonna have to pay more attention and i'm perfectly fine with that if you look at our video on reliability and the and the and the ownership experience that's perfectly okay with everything not one thing about this car has annoyed me to the point where it, you know it got frustrating even the fuel line rattle even the alignment however just not willing again how we're using the car to to put up with that if i if you know given its use case so just not don't want to go forward with the car knowing that we're going to have to give it the love and attention that it actually does deserve and then number two i guess would be the first sort of complaint about the car and that is the interior you and that's kind of an odd one for me because i really do agree that this interior is incredibly functional the driving position is awesome. Visibility is great. Features, feature-wise, the interior is, is really, really good. However, again, just could never get over the fact that this is a pretty sterile and uninviting interior. And you kind of have to live with the car for a while. Even with the great infotainment system, which is one of my favorites out there, even with the great digital dash, you know, you spend all your time in the interior and it should be inviting. It should be a place you want to spend a lot of time. It's probably the most, it's way more important than, than exterior looks. So let's get to the main reason. The number one reason why we chose to part ways with our GLI. And that is because financially we could. And that doesn't mean we're rolling in dough. It just means that the, we took advantage of this crazy, crazy last couple years in the car market where we bought in 2020 at an incredibly got an incredible deal on this GLI and then over the next couple years as the chip shortage developed and inventory went to zero cars just don't depreciate and uh, we actually one of those trips to the dealer trying to deal with the fuel line I, I ran into our very nice sales lady who you know very very accommodating and she said i'm so sorry you're not liking your gli i'd love to get you into something else but i don't have any cars she said but i'd love the buyers and uh, you wouldn't believe the price i'm going to give you for it so i'm like look i i you know that'd be great and everything but i got to go out and find something else and there's nothing to buy out there so she gave me the number and i was like oh Okay, that's pretty much what we paid for it. Maybe if we do do some car shopping and we can find something that we don't feel like we're being ripped off, maybe we could do this. So that's what we did. We ended up diving head over heels, you know, head in, head first, car shopping, trying to find something that we refused to go over MSRP and we did. We did. We found a car that we felt brand spanking new uh, at actually just a tweak under msrp but for all intents and purposes it was msrp so financially this was a no-brainer we essentially drove our gli for 20 20 months for free and then and and the other thing is is the i mentioned at the beginning of this video we did need that four-wheel alignment and four new tires however the we, we traded it in got the price that Volkswagen was offering and that dealer had to do that alignment and replace those four wheels. So we came out way ahead and the car that we bought 
we really, really love. And we're going to debut that car in our next video. And, uh, and for all the different reasons, uh, we'll get into why we like that car and why we thought it was going to meet our needs. And we thought, hey, if you're going to do a YouTube channel and you can change out your long-termer to create content, why wouldn't you do that? So anyway, we do love the GLI. We recommend the GLI. If I were in the market, I'd really probably want a GTI, a Mark 7. I would. I just cannot get over that infotainment system right now in the Mark 8s. However, it is a better car. So I kind of would shy back towards a GTI if I were going to go this route. But I do recommend the GLI. Just make sure it fits your use case and you will love it. So leave a comment or question below. We would love to answer any questions you have about our ownership experience with the GLI. Again, check out all of our other videos and subscribe and like today if this brought you any value. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day, morning or evening, wherever you may be.